So how do you suppose Videl can help now? Does she even need to help? Hey folks, Masako X here. Now 2020 is coming to an end, thankfully for some, as is this what if. We are at the penultimate outing for this iteration for Videl's adventure into discovering her true potential. As we have witnessed, she can do wonders, not just with direct tussles and fracas, but also when it comes to getting characters to do other things. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the details at this point regarding the thinking behind this what if because you've heard it so many times, but suffice to say, that Sophie B, Havarok and I are very pleased with how this what if has turned out and where it is going to be heading for this and the final part coming on Thursday, New Year's Eve. In the last part, we saw Barbadi's best laid plans falling apart when he realized that Boo was not what his father Bibidi had spoken of. Thanks to circumstances that hadn't been disclosed to him, Boo was a petulant infant in demeanor. As a result, this made the latter not work with Barbadi at all and instead become friends with her kill, and then the dog B, who in turn almost got ended by that evil Van Zant, arguably the most evil villain in all of Dragon Ball. HOW DARE YOU HURT THE DOGGO! As that happened, Videl managed to do what we've been all craving to do, and that is to make Gotenks less irritating. Simply by making Goten believe in himself more, to assert his personality, and also to make Trunks less grumpy and domineering. It worked, and we then got a Gotenks who is still impish and quirky, sure, he's a child fusion, but is far more to the point and willing to work with instruction instead of, you know, not. On top of that, we had Vegeta and Goku in the other world reunited, the former with his body. Which does beg the question, hey, Vegeta, how did you get to keep your body? Ponders Goku. King Kai nods, knowing the answer. I thought the same thing when he showed up here, but apparently Vegeta's recent redemption and willingness to sacrifice himself for the greater good of mankind was barely enough to tip the odds in his favor. And trust me, King Yama, he really wanted to send him to hell. But, but, <laughs> you, you, you tell him, Vegeta. Vegeta smirks. I asked him about Raditz, and I made the comment that his hair reminded me of a pineapple. It made him laugh, and so, well, here I am. King Kai slaps his knee with mirth. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good ripper. I didn't think Saiyans could be so hilarious. Vegeta and Goku, though, looked very keen to train together right now. If they were to spend eternity together, they could get really strong. That is until Shin shows up. He hails King Kai, to which the king bows with respect. Hey Shin, what's up? Goku, I need you to come with me. I've got something to show you on my home world. It might be of use to you concerning Majin Buu. I fear things have gotten worse back on Earth. But Supreme Kai, I can't go back. You know, my, my time's up. I'm aware of that, but please, come with me. I'll explain more when we get there. Vegeta coughs, as if to remind Shin that he was there too. Whatever thing you have to show Kakarot, you can show me too. Shin looks pained and sighs. Oh, fine, you can come too. Grab my hand. With that, Shin teleports Goku and Vegeta off to the sacred world of the Kais. King Kai sighs himself with relief. Ah, oh, thank goodness. I thought I was going to have to repair a lot of things today. Good thing I don't have to. He then turns back to his house and closes the door. Back on Earth, Videl, Krillin, and 18 are hiding both themselves as well as their power levels. Well, 18 doesn't need to since she doesn't give off key. They were told earlier as part of the plan to get off of the lookout in case things go bad and await further instructions. Little did Videl know that Gohan had basically sealed himself away forever in another dimension. She was spared that chestnut of the prospect of never seeing her partner ever again. For now, all they could do was wait to see what could happen next. Both Krillin and 18 were impressed with Videl's performance and bravery. How did he know he wouldn't fight you? I don't know. I just saw that he wasn't attacking me and so I chose to make the most of it. I can't really explain it any better. Out of the way, kid, 18 says looking at her with pride. You did good. We can at least live a little longer to help out in any way. Yeah, says Videl with a somber air to her voice. But the others though, they weren't so lucky. It's okay, Videl. We have a means to bring them back good as new. Dragon Balls. 
He then explains how the Dragon Balls work in detail, and that makes Fidel feel a little better. Back in the Room of Spirit and Time, it plays out as you would expect. Boo is absolutely apoplectic at being trapped inside this dimension against his will, as well as being dominated by a little kid. Gotenks, having attained a mysterious new form of Super Saiyan, Goku had never shown it off, but had explained about it in a new form of Super Saiyan 3, to which it was far greater in power than even Gohan's Super Saiyan 2. Both Gohan and Piccolo felt confident that this transformation could finish off Boo, and then maybe they could find another way to get out of this dimension. But then Boo screams at full pelt in desperation, and that rips a hole in space time like you know. He escapes and takes out his anger with beam after beam down on the ground. Using that same trick, Gotenks screams out and the others fall out and back into reality. Seconds later though, Gotenks defuses due to the massive power drain of Super Saiyan 3. Gohan exclaims, Huh? What? But, but it hasn't been 30 minutes yet. Piccolo curses. It was barely five. Goku never told us that Super Saiyan could drain the time limit so quickly. <sighs> it's useless. Goten and Trunks felt very sad to have defused, but at least they were home again. But then the pain of souls snuffed out echo through their minds. They had to find another way to stop Boo now. Down below, Krillin could sense this happen, the defusing of Gotenks, and cowered with fear. Uh, uh, th this is not good. They're separated again. Aitin Videl turned to him and audibly gasped. Now what do they do? Fusion had failed. Or had it? Videl puts two and two together. Say, Aitin, do you remember how to fuse? Aitin shrugs. I guess. We did spend hours watching those kids do it. Why? Well, why don't we give it a shot? Aitin looks quizzically at her. For real? You think it will make any difference? Well, one thing's for sure. I can't stand waiting here to die. Honestly, I'd rather go out like I came in, screaming and kicking. Eighteen pauses for a second. Good point. Let's do it. Krillin is surprised to think that it will work and that Videl could be that close to Eighteen in terms of power already. Well, I think what you need to remember here, and this is what I'm going on, is that Eighteen does not produce key. So her power level, thanks to the Infinity Engine, is quite versatile. And also, Videl's gotten much stronger thanks to the better training of Gohan. So, yeah, I'm gonna go with this. Anyway, they can sense Boo getting close, and this is their time. They decide to fuse. Boo can sense a huge power flare up below him, and without hesitation, speeds towards it. When he arrives, he is greeted by not two people, but one. Enter the fusion of Videl and Lazuli. Visually. As Krillin can see, she is visually spectacular. All about the name puns on the Master Collex channel. You can't get mad at me, because Toriyama did it too. Now, you might be able to immediately suspect that this fusion is still not enough to beat Super Boo. And yeah, you would be right. She is incredibly powerful, much greater than the sum of her parts individually, but it is not enough to outdo Gotenks. That being said, we do have an interesting opportunity to explore what a fusion involving an infinity engine can do. Visually, eyes up Boo and is keen not to run away this time. Weird. Boo sensed a weak power here, but now power much bigger. Have you been hiding from Boo? Where is Videl? She's, She's right, right here. here. She splays her arms out to show herself. Boo tilts his head in confusion. But Videl doesn't have yellow hair. Visually punches Boo in the face and it catches him off guard. Boo gets sent into the dirt and it is enough to shake the ground below. Krillin is amazed at this. That lack of response is like with Videl earlier, solely. Had that trait of Boo having issues fighting back carried over in this fusion? Visually lands on the ground and rests her hand on her hip as if she was massively bored. 18's brazen dominance ringing out here. I may not be as strong as you big guy, but I can give you what you crave. Now stop sleeping on the job and let's do this. She gets into a fighting stance. Gohan stance, Videl contributed here and Boo lets out a scream of anger. You dare taunt Boo! He surges forward and the fight begins. Boo does have the upper hand over Visually, but much to Boo's surprise, she does not get tired. She just keeps going. Whatever the Infinity Engine contributed to this fusion, it meant that this fusion did not tire, nor did her extra power cut down the time limit. They were going to be going for the full 30 minutes at full charge. 
So yeah, you can consider this battle as the halftime entertainment. Visily knew that she could keep Boo occupied long enough for Gotenks to tank back in. As that's been going on, Goku and Vegeta have been told about the legendary Z-Sword, the thing that might be enough to stop Majin Buu. Goku had been doing his best to wield it, but he was getting more and more impatient, not really seeing the point of a weapon. In a fit of rage, Goku resorted to the transformation he never got to use on Earth, and this shocked Vegeta, Super Saiyan 3. The form could definitely carry the sword and was flailing it around getting used to the feel. Vegeta is dumbfounded. What? You've been hiding this from us, Kakarot? Why didn't you use this against Majin Buu? I needn't have taken my own life. Goku pauses. It's not as easy as that, Vegeta. If I'd have used this, it would have drained my energy within a couple of minutes. Here, it can last a little longer, since I'm not tied to a mortal body. It works differently here for some reason. Shin nods and confirms that that is the case. You can push harder here since your body wasn't entirely physical. At least in the traditional sense. Vegeta does take note of this though. But the sword breaks, like in the original. And the Elder Kai thanks them for his freedom. He then offers to train Goku in a special technique to which piques Goku's interest. It first involves sitting down and concentrating for 25 hours. Goku nods, not really thinking anything of this thinking back to his time training on Yardrat. That involved a lot of sitting down, assuming that this was more of the same, and then the main training would come about later, so this was just the beginning. 25 hours pass, and this is where Goku realizes he's probably made the biggest mistake of his lives. He has become ultimate Goku. There was no more training after this. But why would this be a bad thing? Goku's now at his full potential. Well, you see, that's the point. Goku's now at his true maximum potential ever. In terms of his skill set and talent, he can't get any more powerful, like with Gohan. With Gohan, though, that didn't really matter as much, since he didn't care to get any stronger after that, thinking what he had would be enough, and then he could call it a day. As for Goku... Oh... That's probably the biggest oof you can think of in Dragon Ball. You know how much Goku hates handouts, and now on top of that, he can't get any stronger and pushes limits. To the Saiyan, this is a disaster. When the Elder Kai is done explaining that Super Saiyan is no longer necessary, this bums Goku out immensely, and then that low morale turns to anger. He screams out to the heavens and burns off excess energy, which of course now is limitless, so that was a fruitless exercise. Vegeta is left stood on the spot. He could tell Goku got stronger, sure, but he too could understand the remorse that Goku must be experiencing right now. He was actually showing some sort of empathy. The chance to get stronger has been taken away from him. I must admit, as a Saiyan, this is probably the worst thing that could happen to him. After he had vented as much as he could, Goku lay down on the ground, contemplating his lot. Shin sits by him and asks what's wrong. You don't get it. I've got nothing to aim for anymore. All my life I've sought stronger opponents, and to get stronger once I had beaten them, never stopping. If you and what your masters say is true, then that can never be. I peaked. Shin thinks for a moment. Is there anything else I can do for you? To help? Goku looks to him, still looking serious. Can you use your influence to get me back to Earth? I want to have something to let off my steam against. That person being Majin Buu. This power should be enough to stop him. He sighs a little. Shin thinks, not sure what to do. This is my fault, Goku, pipes up the Elder Kai. I didn't realize that this would remove you of your greatest passion. It was entirely selfish of me not to explain properly. I wish to make it up to you. He gets up and in one move, he gives his life force to bring Goku back to life. Consider us even. He gives a thumbs up and Goku feels a little bit better. Back on Earth, with Boo distracted, Dende communicates to Bulma that this is the right time to use the Dragon Balls. Since they hadn't been used earlier to clean up Margin Vegeta's mess, which of course never happened, Bulma could gather them quickly with the help of Yamcha, Tenshinhan, and Chiaotzu. When they had managed to gather them in record time and summon Shenron, they used the first wish to bring back those who were killed by Margin Boo and Barbadi. Suddenly, millions of people are revived, including Vegeta, who notices in the other world his halo was gone. In that moment, Shin realizes something. This is a chance to do something. They're both alive again. Goku, Vegeta, grab my hand. It's time to do something about Boo. Now's our chance. 
Goku nods, as does the prince, and together they make their way back to Earth through the art of instantaneous movement. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now. So what do you folks think? What can Ultimate Goku do against Super Buu? Will he be absorbed like Gohan was? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later!